presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. I hope you all are having a good day, of course. So, uh, we're kind of down right now. Uh, some major contractions right now in composite, off about 2.42%. Dow Jones Industrial is doing okay, comparatively speaking, off about 0.5%. Uh, the DXY cracking down below that 104 level, trading at 103.94. You have the E mini off about 1.56. Gold contract contracting a little bit as well. Uh, along with silver, which is off about 3.29%. Maybe that's had some major moves to the downside the past two days, trading at 32.95. Uh, uh, you know, I would, I would think if you have this kind of contraction from essentially within the composite, these large caps, that you would see maybe some capital shift over to the Russell and you're just not. That's off about 1.07%. Bonds are down price wise. Disney is like, well, basically. In my actual personal portfolio is the only thing that's green today, which is hilarious. Uh, but it's trading at 96.38, kind of shifting around that 95, 96 area. Okay, you know, I mean, big news, right, is you have Meta selling off, you have Microsoft selling off. Let's talk first just about Meta quickly, because I have more to speak about on Microsoft. Uh, so we're off 4.3% right now, trading at 566.58. It reported weaker than expected user numbers and warned of a significant acceleration in its infrastructure expenses in 2025. And that's something that you guys should think about when you're looking at any of these companies that are going to be hyperscalers and AI, the CapEx uh, for building out uh, you know, land infrastructure, getting these servers working. That is going to be a very strong uh, increase in, in capital expenditure. And of course, we've been saying that we knew this was going to happen. Um, but I think the market just, for whatever reason, momentarily didn't like that. Meta has some other issues, again, with less than expected uh, user count. Uh, but regardless, their EPS was 603 versus 525. Revenue was 40.5 billion versus 40.3 billion expected. Sales in the third quarter jumped 19% year over year, while net income grew 35% to 15.7 billion. That's from 11.6 a year earlier. It is lower year-over-year -year growth, but they're still smashing like, the earnings on this. And that was the same with Microsoft as well. But, you know, I wonder, like, partly, I don't feel strongly on it on, on Meta. Um, I wonder if they'll go through some kind of split at some point here, especially at this price point. But I definitely feel it for Microsoft, right? We'll talk a little bit more about that. Meta, Meta also raised capital expenditure guidance for the 2024 fiscal year to between 38 and $40 billion which is up from 37 to 40 billion previously. Additionally, the company said it expects capital expenditures uh, to continue to grow significantly in 2025. And again, that is due to acceleration in infrastructure. It says our AI investments continue to require serious infrastructure, excuse me, require serious infrastructure. And this is Zuckerberg speaking. I expect to continue investing significantly there too. Said so the total expenses for the FY 2024 is going to be in the range between 96 and 98 billion. That is lower than previous guidance. Advertising revenue came in at 39.9 billion for the quarter. That's up 18.7% year over year. Advertising accounted for 98.3% of Meta's total revenue in the third quarter, which is kind of intense. Uh, yeah. So then, really, let's just let's talk about Microsoft because I do think this might be. An interesting time to get into the stock, almost. Um, if, if I were going to approach it this way, I'd probably buy 
some leveraged ETF on it, like MSFU. Of course, you don't want to hold those like super long. Um, but I think you you might get a nice bounce opportunity from here because there's nothing that's exceptionally wrong. I mean, they're still doing what we expect them to do. Let's talk a little bit about Microsoft first off. Okay, I'm going to just pull over this stuff here. So this is for what they just released. Okay, so revenue was up 65.6 billion. That's an increase 16%. OI was up 30.6 billion, increased 14. Net income 24.7 billion, increased 11%. Diluted earnings per share uh, was 330, increased at 10%. So that did beat expectations. So 365 commercial products and cloud services revenue up 13%, driven by 365 commercial cloud revenue growth of 15%. What I really want to do is kind of get down uh, to here. Yeah, so if you're your growth, at least in 22% from Microsoft Cloud, which is huge. LinkedIn was a great acquisition, right? Up 9%. Xbox Content and Services, which is going to, they just acquire that. So you get a mass capex in the past, at least because of that, right? I believe they spend something around 60 billion um, for essentially Activision Blizzard, which is going to, which is now under the Xbox license. Uh, additionally, with that ownership, I was actually kind of, Interesting is I don't really get advertised a lot of video games or whatever, um, but I was watching uh, some Joe Rogan interview, and at the very beginning, they actually were advertising Call of Duty, and I don't think that's a very prominent thing that had that was done you know in the past, right? Where they kept much more just within the realm of video game players. Um, I mean, going on something and paying for a spot on Joe Rogan right in the beginning, especially with a guest uh, like he had on, I can imagine it was was cheap in any capacity. So they're definitely ramping up investments, uh, at least in advertising. Uh, Azure and other cloud services, this is up 34%, which is nuts. And then what we can do is just go over to their outlooks. Seeing, yeah, again, gross margin percentage of 70%, Azure and other service revenue, a growth of 31 to 32%, right? So a little bit lower, right, than this 34%. But still pretty fantastic. Um, and again, you're going to see, uh, let me see if I can, this is just the appendix. I don't know what happened to my other slide for it. Let me see. Oh, it's sold. There's another slide that I had. I guess this was the wrong, this is on my other computer. It doesn't matter. The point was is that they are also increasing CapEx, um, essentially, to build out this AI. And that is no doubt going to pay off, you know. So... I think my only hesitation in doing something like leverage ETF right now, like such as MSFU, is, yeah, I can see a bounce from this level for sure. I think this is a pretty strong reaction to this. I think the company's prospects are virtually unchanged, right? We all knew they were going to spend more money, so I'm not really sure what people here thought was going to be different in before guidance. Um, Although I could also see a realm where you just get a slower kind of crawl right back up, which makes me a little bit hesitant to jump in and put a bunch in. I think I also kind of want to wait for Amazon as well uh, to see how their cloud business is doing uh, with AWS. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Jupe. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have our man Tim Ord on. If you want to go to your uh, web browser, you can go to ord-oracle.com. Go ahead and check him out. Additionally, you can go over to tfnn.com. You can go over to the services tab. Once your internet service provider gives you enough bandwidth, you scroll down. We have two fantastic lecture series right here. The Secret Science of Market Tops with Tim Ord and six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ort. Again, the value of 149, that is a complete steal. Tim, how are you doing? Good, thanks. We're on again. We are on again. Let's see what's going on. Obviously, you're getting some stumbling today, definitely on some of the earnings, and I'm just kind of curious what we're looking at right now. I see a lot of people talking about RSI and VIX in the den. Let's see if there's anything you're looking at uh, in regards to that. And of course, we have the, uh, man, this time just marches on, doesn't it, Tim? We're where, where, when is it? Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we have the elections. Yeah, next Tuesday. So uh, a lot of things going on. So this is kind of a, a you know once uh, every four year type market. So it's a little bit different than than regular markets. Uh, yeah. So but one indicator that's worked pretty well uh, is uh, chart one. Yeah. Uh, that, that's we we showed this Tuesday. And really, nothing's really changed. Market's down. I thought we might get to 570, and here we are. I'm long a couple of days ago, but uh, I'm not really changing my mind on on the bigger picture. Bigger, uh, I think I said yesterday in my mark or in my report, either the market's going to have to decline today or tomorrow uh, for it to decline because next week seasonality is really bullish. Not saying I'm not sure what Monday will be. Monday might be a nothing day because Tuesday is an election. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. But anyhow, I did go along a couple of days ago. I was kind of waiting until the end of the week and uh, wish I had it, but I didn't. But I'm long right now. I'm staying long. But anyhow, the, the bottom window uh, on chart one is advanced decline with the five day average as a pretty simple uh, indicator well and it kind of just defines basis uh it doesn't really design to, to pick major bottoms out of the market what it's designed for is just finding a short-term lows sometimes the lows are are lasting uh they can appear at major lows uh sometimes they don't but uh normally when you get a reading a five-day reading below 0.65 last friday we hit 0.63 and uh, so that was suggesting we're going into low. The market sometimes will uh, dip a little bit lower, but in general, you're setting at the lows. Yeah. So Friday's low was uh, uh, about a percent or better, percent and a half, maybe a, a higher 
than where we are right now. But anyhow, this indicator is usually pretty good picking out, you know, support areas. So it's kind of one of the reasons why I, I jumped long. I thought, well, maybe uh, I missed a low on Friday, and so I got long. But now we're seeing probably the low right now. But anyhow, it's one indicator suggesting downsides minimal. At a minimum, you should at least flip sideways here. Uh, for the next m month, maybe two, uh, if you look at the sideways consolidations back in uh, 2023, it had a couple of minor lows there, but those lows lasted a couple of months each. So uh, that'd be the worst case scenario. The market just flips sideways from here. Right. But I'm thinking we're, we're going to do something more. Let's go to chart two. Yeah, fantastic. Or second chart. Uh, this kind of looks at the bigger picture. Uh, this this. The top window is NYSE summation index. I showed this also on Tuesday. But when you get a reading just kind of out of the blue, uh, major lows form when this indicator hits below minus 700, then rallies to plus 1,000 within two months. That's where major bottoms uh, form. And uh, those blue and uh, red lines on those, those times were triggered. But sometimes the market just goes up to plus 1,000, that's usually a sign of strength and an uptrend. Usually you don't get major uh, tops when that happens. So you can have some consolidations, but there's always new highs are still expected. So how high is right. high? Uh, well, I think we'll hit new highs before the year's out. It's one of those indicators that will probably, uh, that's what's this indicator is signaling that. So even though we're pulling back here, uh, this is not a major high of any consequence. I'll put it that way. What we're trying to do is find where the next low is. So let's just concentrate on that. Let's go to chart three. Yep. And here's it, uh, the short term low. I thought the uh, uh, SPX tilt ratio is just going to keep trending up. And if that was the case, then um, then we wouldn't have this pullback. Well, we got the pullback. And I thought we might, and so I was kind of teetering back and forth. We got a real narrow range, and finally we kind of fell through the recent lows. Well, where is the support? I got circled on the chart uh, in uh, mid-July there, a circle. Then uh, first part of August, I got another circle. Then uh, first part of about mid-October, actually October 14th, we got a, a, a circle another time. And there's a blue circle right now, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But the market, if it gets too far away from the norm, the norm is that this is uh, the SPY with the Bollinger Band on it. The norm is the dotted line on the chart. If you get too far away from it, uh, you'll come back to it, if not break and go down below it. But it always comes back to it. So it's kind of the norm of what the market is doing so if you get a close above 50 percent of the trading range a close above the upper bollinger band the market is getting stretched too far from the uh, dotted line so those outer the outer lines of the bollinger band are two standard deviations away from the norm okay so if you're below the bollinger bands that's two deviations if you're above the bollinger band that's two deviations above so what normally happens you pull back so i, I this is a short time frame i just circled three of the times when we did it and, and pretty much october 14th that was pretty much the high more or less flipped sideways and right now uh we're going down and we're actually testing uh, the lower Bollinger Band right now, that's where I got circles at Bollinger Band and Gap. Yep. You see, see there? So, you know, we're testing a gap, and we're also right smack at that Bollinger Band. If we close below the Bollinger Band, that would be 50%. So we got a little ways to go, but tomorrow may do it. I don't know. I bet tomorrow's an update, personally. Yeah. Because <laughs> seasonality is actually turns bullish. But anyhow, uh, if you close below the Bollinger Band, that would be a bullish sign. If we close 50% below, I don't know if we'll get that or not. But probably this vicinity, the 570 area on the SPY is probably going to be support. And I said that in my market letter. And I think the last time we were on the show, I thought that was a possible target also. Yes. And it turns out it is. So um, how far down from here? I, I think this is probably about it. So it's just kind of a one day wonder. Uh, so, you know, if the market's going to decline, the only really part of the decline can really happen now is probably tomorrow. And tomorrow, uh, 
since we're basically touching the Bollinger Banner right tomorrow, if we actually close below it, uh, you know, it'd probably be a good trade for commodities because your chances of keep falling are pretty nil. Right. So I'll have to wait and see if we close below it tomorrow and we get a narrow range close. Probably think about the S&P contracts. Uh, so yeah, I can totally uh, see like a shakeout happening today and like a little rebound uh, when we start tomorrow. Uh, Tim, stay right there. I know we got to look at some gold as well. We have the gold contract trading off about 1.49. Some of the miners are getting hit. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ward. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. We have the composite off about 2.4%. Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.570. That's SPY off about 1.5. We're joined right now by Tim Ord. 
of the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, I believe we were just going to start looking, uh, traversing into the realm of uh, gold. They have the GDX right now off about, uh, let's see here, off about 2.5% today. Everything's kind of getting hit today in a weird way, you know? Yep, yep, yep. I see that. So let's look at the uh, short term. Let's go to chart four. Yep. Uh, okay, chart four, you know, the bottom indicator again, this is kind of a short term deal. Uh, the It's a GDX up down volume with a 50 day average. You need it to be above zero for uh, an uptrend. As uh, when I made this chart, it's right at the zero line right now. Uh, what I do think, though, if you go to the top window, uh, I have a dotted blue line across the top. Yes. And that comes that comes in around 40, give or take. And it's probably going to be support because you hit a new high. Uh, you jumped above the uh, high of 2022. So I think that's probably going to be support. I think 40 range is probably going to hold. Uh, on a bigger time frame, uh, there's really nothing suggests a meaningful top. Um, I think there's, there could be a, a sideways consolidation here around the 40. I think that's about the worst case, but I don't think this top of any consequence. Because let's flip to chart five. Yes. Uh, this is the reason why. Um, this chart's really good at, at actually showing divergences. Uh, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline. Next window, that's for the GDX. The next window up is a cumulative up-down volume, and the top window is GDX. So I kind of mark different times so you can tell, like in December of 2023, GDX made higher highs. Uh, the up-down volume made lower highs and advanced decline made lower highs. That's a major divergence. Then if you look back in May and June of, of this year, 2024, GDX actually pulled back. And both those indicators just went sideways. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of an internal sign of strength. Uh, again, GDX in uh, July of this year made lower lows. But it, if you notice, that's the green area I, I got noted. And the indicator just actually matched the previous lows. And right now, which is the, uh, the purple area, GDX has made higher highs. The up-down volumes also made higher highs. And advanced client made uh, higher highs. And also, it showed GDX, uh, uh, like September, made a lower low against a previous low. And both those indicators made higher lows. And right now, we have no divergence. I mean, both markets up, down, volume have turned around uh, or, or have both pulled back. But the real key here is will be the next rally. If right. GDX makes a new higher high and both those indicators make lower highs, that would be time to worry, uh, at least for a consolidation, not not any top. So I'm thinking we're probably going to find support right around where we are right now. Because that's the highs of, of, of previous highs in the past. So I'm, I'm thinking since this is not showing any divergence of any consequence, um, we're just probably pulling back. And the market, uh, as far as the equity market concerns, I actually have it really strong all the way into year end, possibly into January. Uh, and that strong part of that rally starts next week. So I think probably. Uh, these markets are kind of just whipping around here. I don't see anything dangerous on the equity market or the, uh, the gold stock market. I think this is, I think we're entering a, a new time. All the back and forth of years past yeah. are gone. And finally, we're getting, we're getting into an impulse wave that I think may last for at least another year. Similar, I mean, you may have some consolidations may last a month or two, but that consolidation, uh, be more of a sideways move instead of a retracement because impulse impulse wave don't really retrace that much yeah so I, I don't see any danger i think there's a lot of money to be made in the market equity market and the gold market here and i think actually gold market may outperform the equity market uh, over the next 12 months because it's due for that i guess you might say so let's, let's look at uh another chart here let's go to chart six yep and uh, this is momentum chart. Momentum rules all market. You know, it's all right, well, momentum rules all indicators. If a momentum's up, I don't care what the indicators say, the market's going to keep going up. And so that's why I kind of designed this indicator. It works pretty well. Um, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline on a weekly time frame. 
uh, and I got the Bollinger Band on it. And uh, the next window up is a cumulative uh, advanced decline for GDX. And I got the Bollinger Band on it. And the top window is GDX. And this is measures cumulatively the up down volume on a weekly time frame and cumulative advanced decline uh, for GDX on a weekly time frame. So right now, we're pretty much uh, way above the buy and sell signals occur when the, the uh, both indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band, which is a buy signal, and that's those blue lines across the chart. Yeah. And the sell signals come when both indicators close below the mid Bollinger Band, and those are the red lines uh, across the chart. And we got a buy signal, I think, it was back in March of this year. And if you notice, this indicator is still making higher highs and really hasn't even pulled back uh, 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 much at all. Uh, so to me, their their gold stocks are still accumulating the up volume compared to down volume, and there's more advancing issues. Uh, the advancing issues keep expanding, declining issues. So that's very bullish situation. So this is not a top of any consequence. So uh, can we pull back? Yeah, but not much. Uh, so I don't see any trouble. Uh, and again, if you look at the, you know, the, the time sequence between these buy and sell signals, I mean, uh, the last one we had, we had a sell signal, and it looks like January 2021, and that was a three-year sell signal, and then we finally got a buy signal this year. Uh, so at least a year and a half is minimum, and uh, sometimes they can last three, four years. So I, I think we're due for, you know, we had three years down, you know, we may have three years up now finally. So I don't know, maybe at least two. So, but a lot of these gold stocks, I know on a monthly time frames, I'm looking at them, and a lot of these little bitty stocks are starting to show volume, Big and time. the monthly mid Bollinger bands are starting to uh, bend up. So the small ones are going to come to life here in the coming weeks. Yeah, so, that's what we're hoping except, for for sure. Yeah, you'll see it. So, <laughs> well, Tim. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on again. I guess we're going to see you. Uh, what is going to be election day, huh? Yeah, election day, that would be fun. Yeah, that will definitely be fun. Well, Tim, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on again. We'll see you then, okay? All right, thank you. Bye. Folks, if you want to see more from Tim Ord, you can go right over to the Ord-Oracle.com. Again, he talks a lot about tops. If you want to learn how he's judging that, you go to TFNN.com, go to the services tab. You can check out the secret science of market tops with Tim Ord. Right now, folks, there, there, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching The Tom O'Brien Show. We were just joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Again, if you want to go ahead and check Tim out a little bit more than what you just saw uh, during the live stream, you can go to ord-oracle.com. And again, go to the services tab right over there at tfnn.com. You can take a look at some of those fantastic webinars yet. Additionally, if you kind of just want to review what we spoke about or kind of pay closer attention, at the end of the day, you can go to Tiger Financial News Network on YouTube, and our producer is going to have that uploaded for you, just that segment in particular. Uh, if you do decide to do that, please consider giving the video a like and our channel a subscribe. It helps us all out immensely. Let's take a look. Well, I just want to kind of go over Intel and then a little bit further into SMC. Oh, first, before I do that, I got to talk about this because I was talking about it yesterday and it's kind of important. So, HIMS had this major blowdown, right? You didn't have to make it that long. But, you know, you have a little small gap down there, really closes that gap from October 11th. It's on okay volume, you know, I mean, more than is averagely traded for sure. My thought was because of this kind of deal here, right? What this was, <laughs> was essentially, um, you had terzepatide. I've gone through this a bunch. If you've, if you've listened to me at any point in time, you already know what I'm going to say. Long story short, these guys are compounding semaglutide. Terzepatide is a competitive compound. Okay, it said that terzepatide was off the FDA shortage list. They kind of sold off. And that didn't make any sense because they don't compound terzepatide, they compound semaglutide. So that was a pretty good, uh, you know, buy the dip opportunity there. And it did work for sure. Now, I see this yesterday, and this was in light of Eli Lilly earnings. Uh, you know, you had this kind of confluence of different thoughts, right? Some people are suggesting that maybe the demand isn't as strong for terzepatide uh, than was previously thought. I, I think even if that's true, it doesn't mean uh, that doesn't reflect GLP-1 compounds in whole. Uh, and then additionally, that Eli Lilly was going to start breaking down, uh, excuse me, cracking down on terzepatide compounders. So I'm like, I'm going to wait for tomorrow to see if any news comes out. If we get a small bounce on hims, that's going to be because the market, again, kind of uh, misunderstood what was going on. It does turn out, in fact, today, uh, that semaglutide, which is what Hims is compounding, was so that's from Novo Nordisk, that's your Rogovi, that's your Ozempic, uh, was taking off the FDA shortage list. Uh, I guess it still is in short supply in some capacity. Yesterday, you had the smallest dosage was off the short supply list, and today, all doses of uh, semaglutide uh, drugs are off that shortage list. And that does potentially cause a massive issue for him because a lot of this run-up you're seeing in the company uh, is essentially because they were able to do that, right? And they were selling it for far, far cheaper uh, than Novo Nordisk was. Him still has, you know, some level of staying power, right? They're still gonna be able to compound semaglutide to some extent, but that is going to be far more personalized, so you'll need a doctor's note for it. Uh, that obviously cuts in, um, you know, to how many, like the volume of sales essentially with something like that. Uh, and of course, they're still very prominent in things like finasteride or modafinil, all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, but I need to wait now for earnings to see if this makes any sense um, and they can, they can stand at this kind of level on their own. 
you know, post a compounding era. So it is unfortunate that that wasn't really a balanced opportunity, but just kind of, you know, you always look for that, right? Um, and know what these people are doing. You know, I think that Terzepatite thing was a big fail for a lot of people who sold off because uh, it just wasn't the case. You know, it didn't affect them in any capacity. All right, let's go into Intel because they're going to have earnings release and this is going to be brutal. Um, so it's going to be after the bell today. <laughs> they're down 52% this year. Uh, let's see, for the quarter, Intel is expected to report a loss per share of $0.03 cents on revenue of $13 billion. That's down from the earnings of $0.41 cents per share and revenue of $14.1 billion that companies saw in the same quarter last year. That is brutal. Um, revenue from the company's client computing segment, which deals with sales of chips for laptops and desktops, expected to decline 5% to $7.4 billion versus the 7.8 in the same quarter last year. Revenue Intel's, excuse me, revenue for Intel's foundry business, which is what everyone was saying, oh, this is going to be beautiful, uh, is also expected to drop 6%. We learned again with, with Broadcom, I believe, uh, that they were not able to mass produce the chips that they need. So big time bad news for Intel. They're expecting to report growth in its data center and AI segment with revenue set to climb 3.1 billion from 3 billion last year. Uh, if that's kind of all you got, that's really tough. Let me see. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, it's Broadcom. They were they, they, figuring they couldn't mass reduce these. Um, but like the, the foundry business is kind of the only thing because they're getting just blown out of the water by Snapdragon X. Obviously, ARM processors as well are starting to be used in a bunch of these different kind of computers. So, I mean, you know, I think the I think Apple and everyone else has the the ARM foundry down pat. You could argue that Qualcomm might want to look to something like Intel for the Snapdragon chips, but if they can't mass produce them, what's the point? Their GPU is vastly underwhelming. Uh, there's just nothing good going on with it. I could definitely see them selling off some part of the business, especially something with like the foundry or something like that. Uh, so we'll wait to see. I, I think it's going to be pretty brutal and I I would just not play this because there's there's nothing, there's no green uh, new green pastures for Intel right now. On that same kind of note, take a look at SMCI. Uh, they continue uh, to go down today. Uh, so another gap down, even lower, trading off 12.26% at 29. Um, they're accounting firm that they hired to audit the company, uh, basically resigned saying that they just weren't getting the proper information they needed. Uh, you know, probably dodgy execs over at SMCI. And I'm conflicted on this, not in the sense that I'm, I want to buy the stock because I, I don't. Um, and they have until, I guess, November 16th to clean everything up so they can stay listed on the NASDAQ. Uh, I, I just, for some reason, doubt that they're not, that they're going to be able to, to do that. They are still shipping the server racks, right? So there's nothing wrong in that area of the business. At least, who knows? I mean, there could be. They could be cooking the whole thing, right? I mean, that's something you, uh, you run into an issue with. But in the event that they are doing something like that or they somehow cease to exist at some point because something they're doing is just so unacceptable, you know, it's a shame because their server racks, their cooling that they have with it is uh, pretty proprietary. So I think in that event, let's say they cease operations and these big companies have to find someone else uh, to, to kind of fill this role here. I think Dell is the way to look at it, right? This seems like the only company right now that's selling these massive, that can do this stuff at scale. And that's really the point, right? That they can do this stuff at scale. Um, they've been around for a while. Everyone knows the name Dell. Some people were talking about in the past, even with Jensen Huang, uh, including Dell, uh, regarding the server racks. And, um, you know, they have their new kind of cooling that's working out really well. It's Power Edge XE uh, 9680L. Um, so I'm going to be looking to see if there's anything terrible that happens with SM SMCI. I mean, more terrible in the sense that they cease operations. Dell, I'm, I'm going to be frothing at the mouth to see if uh, these guys get picked up because I have a feeling they, they will. They're the ones who are able to compete right now with SMCI Better Public. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment.
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoe. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We got a short segment here, uh, AG on the YouTube uh, comment section. Was saying, I believe one of the problems Hindenburg reported was that SMCI was shipping sanctioned products to Russia as late as early 2024. Yeah, they that's what Hindenburg <laughs> alleged. Um, here, let me give you some. Yeah, so since the introduction of the sanctions against, Ru against Russia, SMCI products have reportedly been routed through a network of shell companies set up to evade sanctions. Specifically, the importer, importer, this is Niagara Computers, provides components to the Russian state, allegedly received at least $46.3 million worth of super micro products since the start of the Russo-Ukrainian war. Uh, Hindenburg then deduced that super micro used a, quote, web of Turkish shell companies to, quote, knowingly supply one of its longstanding Russian customers, uh, you know, you would need some larger investigation to determine if that is accurate um but in hindenburg a lot of times i think can be a little bit excessive with what they're saying obviously of course they have a bias they have a massive short position out on it right they did that whole thing with roblox saying that there were you know predators on it or whatever and it, it you know sold it off somewhat tightly kind of come back on it and now you're you know making massive highs right now up about 20 percent on some earnings and not even necessarily that the earnings were any good um they they just didn't they didn't do as poorly as was initially expected. Um, 
But, you know, I always take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt from Hindenburg in a major way. Uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about Ubisoft. They, uh, let's see here. They're in a tough situation in a big way. They're up a little bit right now, uh, but they've declined massively, down 39% year on year to about 380 million euros. That's 412 million. Has no new releases this quarter, completely bungled. Uh, release is something that costs about $295, or $295 million over a span of 10 years. Um, this is a hurting company. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. We'll see you tomorrow.